this is the new covenant. Christ willingly submitted to this for our sakes. And this was the final sacrifice to God for our fallenness. So Christ continues to, to be that representative of us in that new covenant. Good morning. Welcome to uh, the fifth Sunday in Lent service this morning and to the friendly reminder that it is still winter outside, a little different than last Sunday. Um, I just missed the big squall that came through. Um, I got here and five minutes later, it, we had white out here for about five minutes. So I don't know if it's still uh, sticking to the ground out there, but yeah, it got pretty uh, pretty bad for about five minutes here. I could, I could actually hear it hitting the, the uh, roof of, <laughs> of the uh, church because it was like sleeting and snowing at the same time. But anyway, um, welcome. Glad you were all able to make it. Looks like the sun's out now and uh, maybe we'll uh, end up with a, a good... Uh, early spring day. So God bless you. Um, go ahead, Drew. As always, please fill out your attendance card um, or an attendance card. Please also, if you have any prayers that you'd like to uh, share with, uh, with us, um, I'd be happy to announce those um, at the beginning. Um, I did have one I would like to, um, to share this morning. So um, my son, Zach, is uh going for a job interview on tuesday it's tuesday right okay so if y'all could please pray for him um i believe it's at request foods in holland so he's uh he's taking the degree he just earned from hillsdale college and uh and shopping that around so um hopefully uh hopefully that works out for him whatever the lord has planned for you um amen to that but uh please please pray for uh for guidance for zach and and for help in his uh in his search for a for a career um and uh yeah go ahead so uh we are continuing bible studies um before service on sunday as well as on uh, wednesdays we are doing a lenten service um through uh through the next couple of wednesdays as well um and uh uh, we are in the um, Book of Concord in different places in both. So um, the large catechism, Apostles' Creed, is where we're at on Sundays. And uh, the uh, Augsburg Confession has borne some interesting uh, conversational fruit. So it's uh, for those of you who haven't looked at it in a long time or would like uh, to, you know, to better understand what's there and just you know, learn more about uh, each other as well. I mean, it's been a good opportunity to learn more about uh, about the people that uh, we have in our church um, and, and just get to know each other more in fellowship and friendship and just how we can be together in worship and service of the Lord. So please join us if and when you can on those. Um, and it, it is the fifth Sunday, so next week will actually be Palm Sunday. And uh, um, we're going to look at having some poems. I think the ones we have might still be good. Okay, so we'll plan to we'll plan to have a Palm Sunday service uh, next week, and then Holy Week is after that. Um, and I'll have more information on the schedule for Holy Week uh, next week. But uh, yeah, Easter is fast approaching. Go ahead, Drew. All right, uh, please stand for our opening hymn, number 282. Oh, one last thing, fellowship. Um, Bruce and Jody have brought some goodies for um, what they're calling a continental breakfast. So please join us uh, with a healthy appetite and uh, fellowship um, after service today um, for, some, uh, for some special treats. Compliments of Bruce and Jody. Thank you. The Old Testament reading for today is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, verses 31 through 34. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, 
when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it in on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. O come, come, let, let us, us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. faith. For the, For the joy, joy that, that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Today's epistles from the fifth chapter of Hebrews, verses 1 through 10. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, He became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 32 through 45. And they were on the road, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him, and spit on him, and flog him, and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. To sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. 
But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The New Covenant. Yes, it's 2,000 years old, but it's new. I don't know how many of you have watched the Bible Project on YouTube. Um, this is actually a screenshot from discussion of all of the covenants that God made with man in the Old Testament. As you can see, there's quite a few. Um, what exactly is a covenant? The Oxford Dictionary defines it simply as an agreement. Biblically, it's a relationship or it defines our relationship with God. As you can see, God has been making covenants or has made covenants going all the way back to um, even before Adam. So when he first created the heavens and the earth, there was a covenant there. So God agrees to fill fulfill promises made to us in return for our acting according to his will. So in the second one, the Adamic or Adamic, you may enjoy everything except don't touch this tree of knowledge, this tree right in the middle of the garden. Leave that one alone. Do that and you will live in paradise forever. Suffice to say, we broke that one too. But um, Noah, okay. he uh, he said, "Build the ark, and I will save you and your descendants." Uh, Abraham, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Moses, the Ten Commandments, primarily, but. Also, um, his brother Aaron was the uh, head of the lineage of priests, the Aaronic priests, and also the Levites. Um, so the priesthood during the Old Testament. Anyway, you see number eight there. It says new. So that's the one we're going to talk a little bit more here shortly. <clears throat> so... Abraham and Moses uh, entered into covenants with the Lord, or God entered into covenants with, with them and their people, um, some of which bestowed priestly authority. So Melchizedek, um, well, this is the new covenant, so we'll talk about that one first. This is from the scripture we wrote today, or read today. I will make a new covenant. I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. So forgiveness of sins is part of the new covenant. This is a shot of uh, the priest Melchizedek blessing Abraham. So Abraham, um, Abraham um, agreed to leave his homeland and to lead, uh, lead a basically a, a group of freedom fighters to to free people from bondage that God had asked him to. So when he and his troops returned from that conquest, uh, Melchizedek blessed him. And he actually did that over bread and wine. So um, some believe that Melchizedek might have actually been Christ, but um, at the very least, uh, it set the precedent for what would become our, um, service of the sacrament that we uh, celebrate at least once a month here <clears throat> the uh let's go back to the new covenant real briefly so the new covenant uh was through jeremiah so god declared it not to be like the covenant that i made with uh, the israel the fathers of israel on the days when i took them to or by the hand to bring them out of the lands of egypt so the mosaic covenant um, the Ten Commandments, but also, you know, I will 
lead you out of the land of Egypt into the promised land. Um, that was broken, I think, in about 40 days um, when they constructed the uh, or uh, forged the golden calf. So that was the end of that covenant. Um, but for the new covenant, it was something that would be everlasting through eternity and would include the forgiveness of sins. And even though it didn't say in Jeremiah specifically, it was the, uh, it was the foreshadowing of the coming of Christ to do that. So God was going to be sending his own son uh, to fulfill his end of this new covenant, which we're actually still in today. And as our high priest, Allah Melchizedek, um, he was required to offer sacrifice as a high priest, although his sacrifice was much more uh, selfless in the regards to he actually gave up his own life as part of that covenant. That was a traditional role of the high priest. Um, to offer gifts and sacrifice for sins when called by God. We read that in Hebrews this morning. Melchizedek's also mentioned in the Psalms. So the Psalms allude to that covenant um, where Christ would come as a high priest and offer the ultimate sacrifice and be the fulfiller of that new covenant with us. His gifts and sacrifices for our sins, his own body and blood. He tells us in Mark that the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. Paul says he would then become the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him forever after. This is the new covenant. Christ willingly submitted to this for our sakes. And this was the final sacrifice to God for our fallenness. So Christ continues to to be that representative of us in that new covenant. Christ won our freedom from bondage of sin and enabled us to share in the promises of this new agreement with God. What does he ask in return? Well, here's one of them. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. I picked Luke here because Luke actually mentions the word daily or says the word daily explicitly. This quote is in other Gospels, but only, only Luke mentions daily. So this, this, is a, this is not a once a week thing. It's not even a partial day thing. It's a 24-7, 365 thing. This is what Christ is asking. Here's another one from Mark. The time was fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So again, as Lutherans, we believe that repentance and faith, maintenance of our faith, we are justified through faith. We repent of the sins we continue to commit and we believe in the gospel, which is the word of God and the story of Christ and his redemption for, of our sins. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. 
Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Love your neighbor as yourself. Second greatest commandment. Again, this is part of the new covenant. This is what Christ is asking for, from us in return for him hanging on a cross and dying for our sins. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Anybody know what we call that in the Bible? The Great Commission, yes. I love this uh, screenshot of the world map. This is another thing we are asked to, to do in return for the sacrifice of Christ. Disciple. Spread the good news to all nations. So we continue to be in covenant with God today, both in and through Christ. Christ is the Son of God. He gave his only Son. He had asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, but then stopped it at the last minute. Abraham was about to do it, but God said, no, that's not necessary. But then he gave his only son, and his son acceded to it. The Holy Trinity is one of the mysteries of our faith. So how that relationship actually works, I think we can only hazard a guess. The Trinity is actually never mentioned by name in the Bible anywhere. Through uh, interpretation and, and continued faith and growth, we've, uh, we've come to believe that we have a God that has three unique persons, three distinct persons, and that there is a father-son relationship there. And, and Jesus does allude to his father um, many times in the gospel writings uh, while he was here on earth and tells, actually tells us how to pray, right? So that's the Lord's Prayer, tells us how to pray to the Father. The Father already knows what we need, so pray like this. But as far as the love bond between them and how the Holy Spirit manifests from that love, our understanding of that is limited even today. God will reveal at the appropriate time. So Christ, who is the Son of God, allowed himself to be humbled. He became human so that he could be mocked, scorned, humiliated, scourged, crucified, and killed for our sins and our eternal salvation and relationship with him and God the Father. This is how he fulfilled the new agreement, the agreement that we're still in with him today. And the Father allowed his Son to be sacrificed for this purpose, even after sparing Isaac's son. We are justified by faith and given the gift of the Holy Spirit through baptism so that we may be sanctified and given grace through the merits of the one, namely Christ, who fulfilled this new covenant. Our grace comes through Christ and his gift to us, and his fulfillment of this covenant. So we owe a 24-7-365 debt that we can never truly repay. We can only reap the rewards through true faith in and fellow followership of Christ, in fellowship together. We have each other to help us with this. It's why we are in fellowship. It's why we worship together. To help each other. To pray for each other. To be followers, true followers of Christ together.
As we near the annual celebration of his ultimate sacrifice, which, like I say, will be after next Sunday, that's Holy Week, leading up to Good Friday, which is what we're showing here. And then his resurrection. So yes, it does end well. But we can't forget this part of that story. So where do we place this new covenant in our list of daily and lifelong priorities? In light of this, how does what he's asking of us compare to this? We all need to ask ourselves that. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. For the gift of the Holy Spirit, that our Heavenly Father would write his word on our hearts and lead us to know him as the God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For Matthew, our Synod President, our District President, our Circuit Visitor, and our Pastor, who like all flesh, well, Vicar, who like all flesh are beset with weakness, that they may deal gently with us and be preserved faithful to proclaim God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For humility, that after the example of Christ, we would not lord authority over one another, but serve each other in our homes, communities, and congregation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all earthly authorities, that they may be guarded from temptation to wield such power improperly and be committed instead to good and faithful service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who walk the way of the cross among us, that as Christ learned obedience through his suffering, they also may be instructed in his ways, sustained by his blessings, and in his time, Receive relief from his fatherly hand. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.